Hi everyone, we are still in Tel Aviv until tomorrow morning actually. Tomorrow is a, uh, again, a very big work day for us, so to speak. I mentioned last night we had the family forum yesterday. Tomorrow we have the women's project and the youth training project, two separate events going. And we're working hard, all of us here, um, focusing on keeping the energy clear and high and so on. This morning, we had a beautiful, incredible training session for all of us to learn the essence of being a facilitator, which Hassan led and very politely told us we could do it very quickly in 10 or 15 years, that you need an abundance of experience and openness before you become able to facilitate for, uh, especially for peace. And it was actually quite enjoyable. There was an exercise that uh, I, I wish I could show it to you, but I can describe it to you. We took a water bottle about like that, I think a, a one and a half liter plastic water bottle. And we imagine that this is the essence of our being, the essence of humanity. And we gently passed it from person to person, which sounds interesting, but easy, and it kind of was, until interference began. One person would take it and very quickly try to run away, and others had to catch them and snatch it from each other's hands. But gradually we developed a rhythm and a sense of connection and it became a project where <coughs> we were really experiencing, not giving it away, but passing it in the circle as if we are one. And just when we got that, we got our breath connected and everything well done, Gassan threw the ultimate curveball, which is, he placed it on our feet. So, um, I don't know if it'll, if it'll pick up, but we were sitting and the bottle was across our feet. Can you tell me if you can see it, Katie? Yep. And so imagine I have this water bottle here and I have to pass it to my neighbor. He, oh, thanks. This is the small one. We had a bigger one. And you had to keep like this and pass it to your neighbor. And it was uh, very interesting. And we began to really connect at a very conscious level and everybody would help each other, not by saying, do this, do that, but by the person who passed it to me might put their foot underneath, the person it was going to was putting their feet on it to get it, and we developed kind of a, a community of bottle passers, and you think, well, that's it, we don't have to do anymore, and then Hassan said, now with each passing, turn to the person and say, I love you, as you're passing the bottle. Wow, it was, it was, first of all, it was enjoyable, and secondly, it was really deep. You began to see how you, you go from your own insecurities, am I going to drop it, and what will people think, and so on, to developing, ah, we're all in this together, and I'm passing it from myself to myself to myself, and myself is not my ego self anymore. Myself is the whole circle. It was a very, very beautiful practice. And he told this story, which I have heard before, but I think is so relevant to what we're trying to do here. And look, I don't say that we're the masters of this. We're like kids. We're learning to walk. We're learning to take one step at a time. But without the spiritual training, without the, the essence that we've trained for, some of us for 40 and 50 years, it just becomes an exercise of the mind but bringing our spiritual practice to this, our religion, true religion, the religion of the heart, it becomes something very profound and very special. So here's the story. A student goes to their teacher, their sheikh, their murshid, their guru, whatever you want to say, 
and they're talking basically about life and depth and purpose and so on. And this, the teacher asked the student one question. He says, so what's the real essence of the teaching? What's the essence of what I've shared? What have you learned? What do you know? And the, the teacher says, the high, I mean the student says, well I've learned the highest state is the state of truth. And the teacher goes, very good, very, very good. Now I'm going to ask you, what's the one state above truth? The student said, how could there be a state above truth? You've said all along, haya, or in Hebrew, chai, you know, it means life, and, and uh, it, hak is truth, the very essence of truth is nothing beyond. It's the name of God. And he said, yes, there's one thing beyond. And the student says, what is that? And the teacher says to him, beyond truth is reconciliation. And so we practice reconciliation. And my own guru, my merchant, my teacher, Pirbalaya, used to say, the work of the Sufi, the work of the individual on any path is to reconcile that which cannot be reconciled. So there are many people here on earth and we, we look for answers because we want to reconcile the different energies within us. And we keep looking and we keep looking and then we create stories and these stories are ways to reconcile that which can't be reconciled. And it works for a time, and then the stories don't work anymore. So what I found is we have to go beyond our own stories, our own points of view, and somehow take these, these stories that cannot be brought together and not do them lin in a linear way because it won't work, eventually it'll fall apart. And this is what we find out in many fundamentalist religions. And what goes beyond that is actual reconciliation, or another way of saying it is moving towards oneness. And that's what we're doing here. You know, we were in a situation the other day, and one person from one faith said, well, I want to make sure that my viewpoint is, is represented. And that's all right, you know, to, to do different narratives, different viewpoints. But that's not the end. That just creates more duality, frankly. What we have to do is take different viewpoints, different perspectives, and somehow make them into one. You know, if you have a cup of flour and a cup of sugar, maybe a half cup of sugar, and you have some yeast and you have some water and you have all of them in their bowls like a cooking show. This is the recipe. This is what we're going to put in to make bread. If you mix them all together, they will make something, but it won't be bread. Why? What makes the bread is the kneading. And the kneading over and over again of the dough will transform it into oneness. And then when the, the dough is kneaded and kneaded over and over again, then it can rise. And so finally you get all the elements working and the, the, the dough rises and then what do you do? Well, after it rises the first time, you punch it down. And then you need it more. And it is the second rising of the bread that ultimately leads to the new configuration that can be baked, that can <coughs> hold, bless you, that can hold the flavor, that can hold the air, that can create something that is delicious because it's, it's gone through the process and it's gone beyond 
the truth to the, reconcil the reconciliated state. And that's the state that we say, oh, this is very delicious bread. And um, there was a wonderful baker in Los Angeles. And um, what's the name of the bakery? It's very famous. Um, she started it. Uh, anyway, my mind is blank in front of the camera. But she started this bakery and s sold it. Sold it for a lot of money and so on and was working there and decided because the bread became very famous and it was sold all in all of California. It's still real, still there. But she left and she started another bakery where you actually didn't use the machines and you could just knead the dough. And even if it was just 10 loaves a day, it was real. She could put her heart and soul into the bread. She could teach others how to knead it. More loaves would come as more pe people came. And uh, La Brea was the original bakery. And I forget the name of the, the new one. It's not new anymore. It was years ago. But anyway, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to bring back the hands to knead the dough so it can fully rise, fall, and rise again. So that's what we're doing, and um, we certainly will keep you posted. Um, anybody want to add anything, or maybe it's enough? Okay. Thank you. And, you know, I always say, please pray for us. I want you to know that we're praying for all of you, too. So thank you.